I am currently here in Albertown, Trelawney, having a discussion with one of the face and the voice behind the anti-mining campaign in the cockpit country. He is Mr. Hugh Dixon, the executive director of the Southern Trelawney Environmental Agency. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! In 2005, the then government issued a special executive prospecting license. SPEL. SPEL 535. It would have taken an era of half or about three quarters of cockpit country, running through all of what we can see here, and maybe a little beyond where the camera will pick up behind me, mm -hmm. and all of what's behind and taking in most, if not all, of the core with the transition zone and the buffer to mine it out for bauxite. And the company who got the, 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 the license issued had augers, put tractors coming in, spinning their auger to take out samples to go back. Because the Jamaica Bauxite Institute, we come to that, has a clear map of where bauxite. So when it <laughs> was to sell bauxite, mm -hmm. it sent people and give them a prospecting license that said, listen, go look and, uh, go and, and verify it and see, if, see that it is the there. Suit, yeah. So them come and them say, dig up, it's there. This landscape has that or in all of what you're looking at here. The excluded areas from the CCPA. The excluded areas. So let me fast forward. Where we are standing and looking behind us, is the critical one on that discussion now. Because there 173. Are some Special mining lease area 173. See them that that, that you see that V in that little hill behind yes. me here? That's Congo Hill. Mm -hmm. If you went straight as my hand points, you end up in Madras. Madras. That is the start point over straight ahead. Mm -hmm. And then you start going north to Gibraltar and down till you get to right. ret retreat. Retreat. Then it doubles back along the roadway, coming past Stewart Town, Westwood High School, mm -hmm. and out to Jackson Town at the point where there is the tax office. And mm -hmm. you now start to come into cockpit country via First Hill, Mahogany Hall, Sawyers, Alps, Ulster Spring, and Albert Town, where we are, are to look back over 29,000 acres of land. It's 8,000. 335 hectares. hectares. If you were able to go up and look over it, what you would find over there is the remnants of the old communities that mm -hmm. have come forward to the roadway because you would have like been in the Alps. The Alps was in maybe two miles. Yeah. When the roadway come and move the whole town, come out and start occupy the front. So basically, you, you're, you're looking at 173, which has been um, issued a license to Naranda. Without a environmental, Without an environmental impact, assessment impact, impact assessment done. I mean, make us be frank with one another. The government of Jamaica has clearly had a negotiation with Noranda to mine bauxite. It's simple. And Noranda must have given Jamaican government some kind of sweetheart deal that make them have some money and them have right away. And by extension, I believe that Noranda is anxiety mode to start Come going to go dig out the place. Because we know they are trying to increase their capacity of bauxite. So, in 2018, the Mines and Geology Division of the Government of Jamaica, I think they're under the Prime Minister, issued to Naranda the license without an environmental impact assessment, which is a prerequisite to issuing a license. And NEPA writes the company to say, listen, you shouldn't get this in Africa, you know, get no mm -hmm. EIA. EIA is not done. So them hurriedly work out the terms on reference for doing an EIA. That's when we pick up here from Naranda, because it is hurriedly doing this EIA in May that it have that. that they have it from September 2008, they have the license. Uh -huh. But in May, why May? Because in March of the same year, they are encroaching on this place that they're not supposed to start mine. Nipper right them and said, listen, yeah, you need to they, draw they, back. They, they, would re, they would have reached Madras and, and um, Gibraltar. Gibraltar, which is on the doorstep. It's the doorstep. Nepa have to tell them, cessation man, come back, you can't go in there yet. Because uh -huh. we know, Clear up the everything yet. Them apologize for doing it. 
Oh, they did. Well, what is an apology? You know, start dig down your place already, man. But it's not only that, my brother. So Nepa it's has no power or authority to prosecute. The question that arises is, does our government have any power when you sell out already? So they breached as far up as March of this year, 2019. So them run come out by May to start the EIA process. And come tell you, say, listen, by September we have mined out that place they're looking at. We are going to be mining over there by the 19th of September 2019. That is what they told us in two meetings, in Sawyer's, which you passed this morning down mm -hmm. the bottom, and in Ulster Spring in two meetings. And we said, what? We don't business with the protocol yet, you know. We are business with the facts that you are coming here, so come tell we. Say you're going to mine out with Yam Grung and dig out what we are accustomed to and independent with over these many years. And him show the map of all of where I told you there. Noranda, they come and say we are mining out this section of the cockpit country, taking out the bottom lands. That's the term we use for the flat areas where man plant them mm -hmm. because the ore is in it's the, there, yeah. That's the modern part of the history of it. So Conrad Douglas and Associates is the company that is doing the EIA. They met with us to get our impression of that as as a third meeting. So they met with Steer and we had our team that clearly outlined what were the challenges associated with it and the impact. So we are waiting for the EIA to see why you are hear the Prime Minister there that they say he got us that it, it is completed. And there is now a process which I gather has now been completed of the conduct of an environmental impact assessment. It is completed, but it is in NEPA, who is obviously in there with that document. But it is in there for maybe about six weeks now. But it's a voluminous document. And we are at, we are at the ending period of August here. It's September around there, so. The 19th is just about a month or so. From here. So by the time we, the Jamaican the people, thing, get to see the thing, man, already. Them, them will shove the thing through and they make another mistake. No, they're going to make another mistake of issuing the go ahead, even if we have difficulty with it, just like they issued the license. So, me now watch that. The government of Jamaica has breached the protocol that they set that you need to have these things in place before you do that. So, they issue it long time. It, the EIA is not even an issue anymore because they didn't give you the license already. Question that is important to me. You need to withdraw it now. But why are they not withdrawing it? Because it seems to me that the government of Jamaica is, is more prepared to be a hustler and mine the bauxite out than look at the other economic sustainable options available to keeping this land, which, which there are many, including the critical number one. This is a watershed. And the 173 is a critical watershed that is going, water goes underground and rises. Water Resources Authority has shown it. The maps are there. The Prime Minister of Jamaica said when he described the cockpit country protected area boundary, mm -hmm. here the trick comes. I consulted with the Mines and Geology Division, the Jamaica Bauxite Institute, the Mining, Ma Jamaica Mines Limited, NEPA, the Forestry Department, and the Water Resources Authority. And they say no mining is taking place in the cockpit, cockpit country, country protected, protected area, area boundary. Mm -hmm. Prime Minister's definition of cockpit country. Mm -hmm. What we discussed earlier is what's the landscape. That is the cockpit country. That is the cockpit country. Trickery in Jamaica thinks mm -hmm. that you can pull a, a wool over the people and trick them. So Paris Leo, i.e. senior, pleasant man, right, Jamaican brilliant. man, brilliant. very brilliant man, yeah. senior. He told me, mm -hmm in 1999 that the Jamaica Bauxite Institute has interests in Northeast cockpit country. So that is where 173, we, 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 172 and 165 is. Right, all of yeah, them. All of that era. Well, so that 165, era. 172, 173. 173. Mm -hmm. 173. So from Ulster Spring, um, Alps, Sawyers, Dom, Jackson, Jackson Town, Stewart Town, uh, out to uh, retreat, come back, mm -hmm. is the northeastern mm -hmm. cockpit country. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the boundary studied by the cockpit country stakeholders group, you see that the cockpit country protected area boundary of the Prime Minister nicely leaves out that area that yeah, we talked Convenient. Mm -hmm. yeah? Now let me bring in another critical fact. In the period of May, while we were being told by Naranda that they're going to mine over there, the Forestry Department of Jamaica, funded by money from the European Union, a part of it, I think $1.5 million, was, 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 was given to, to the government to mark the boundary 
called the Cockpit Country Protected, Protected Area yeah. Boundary. You know where they come first to mark? The Northeast Cockpit Country. And if you have permanent boundaries and get it gazetted in the Parliament of Jamaica, that give it, that give away. Why well, don't ever start out around by the Springvale side to do it? Uh. Them come right there. And the Prime Minister comes to Troy on the 4th of June this year. Mm. Ceremonially put in the peg. Mm. Trick, trick, tricked by the government of Jamaica and their department, all under the umbrella of the Prime Minister's office. Go back to 1999. So I had that notice issued to us. I was inviting Paris Leo e. Senior to a cockpit country stakeholders forum being held around cockpit country in 1999. And his representative who came to the meeting said that the richest deposits of bauxite are in the Northeast. North and this prospecting license issued in 2005 was critically made up with the northeast as the key part and then it taking the rest of the country. Mm, we protested. Street. We protested in 2007 and the then minister, Roger Clark, mm -hmm. withdrew it. And at that point of negotiation, a decision was taken to do a boundary study for cockpit country. Professors from the geology department of the university were commissioned to do the study. The cockpit country stakeholders group said at that time to protect the integrity of this process, let us do our own boundary study. And we called in all the experts that we could find. And they, they did all kinds of boundaries superimposed. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Sweeting. Botanical. The Negar, which is the, um, the National Environmental Gap Assessment Adan. one. The Adan. Mm -hmm. They did the, 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 the botanical. Botan bot botanical. The maroon. The maroon and the cockpit country stakeholders group. Mm -hmm. Studies were all complete in 2008. But how come, how come they were completed in 2008 when Paris would have, would have established in 2005? Paris Leo was doing his thesis, his doctoral thesis. That's where it come from. He was a what guy studying, he was doing his doctoral thesis. What are you saying to me? Very bright road scholar. No, brilliant man. Brilliant No, man. two ways about it. No, but it. a question them brilliant. Yeah. Brother Williams, our brilliance can be used against us if we're not smart. So you're saying to me, I'm going to get this clear, you know. It is his doctoral thesis. You're saying, saying to me that the UWE boundary that we have come to know as the cockpit country protected area came out of a doctoral thesis done by Paris Louis Jr. Yes. So let, let's, let, let, let's not finish it there. This study was finished in 2008 by the commissioners. Return to government. The government of the day, and you can research government in the period. When it got back, it was held and wouldn't be released. We had to be clamoring and beating on doors. Why? We want to find out the res result of the study. It was not released until 2013. Five years on, Professor Weber, when it was released, got another project going to carry that report island-wide to get feedback on it. And in that consultation, public consultation on the cock, on defining cockpit country, based on the feedback from everybody, he has three critical recommendations. Seven, eight, and nine in the report. That says the Paris Leoye boundary should be the core. Yeah, that makes sense. The Negar represent the transition zone. That makes sense. And the cockpit country stakeholders buffer. boundary be the buffer and the outer boundary that. of cockpit country must be there. I think that the government didn't know that we were that smart to be following the, the whole sequence of events. So when the cockpit country protected area boundary was drawn. In my head, hunky panky was going on in the, in the years it was held and wouldn't be released. And when the prime minister said who he consulted, which are the mining interests in Jamaica, mm -hmm. yeah. which have board representation to influence the decision of the more sober departments, not necessarily mining interests. Mm -hmm. You see what happened, why that the boundary come to be the boundary. When we heard in Parliament on the 21st of November 2017 17. that cockpit country was protected. Mm -hmm. We jump up in. We never even interested to look at what was the actual on the map thing mm -hmm. because 
in 2017, having waited for this declaration, having seen the boundary in 2013, and Weber's report was in, we said, why are you not protecting the place? So when we hear protection, we hands up. A few of us looked and said, we are concerned about the boundary because it is deliberately leaving out some areas, particularly what we're looking at over there. One, seven, three. three. Yes? We end up at today. And if you follow the issuing of a license in 2018 without a permit and a hurried boundary around, 2000, well, around 173 by May and the declaration of an EIA in, in, in the same May-June period coming to tell the people that you're going to mine them out, it's a trick. We get scammed because the government wants to secure two things. It wants to earn revenue from mining out the bauxite. Because there are 51 percent there are shareholder 51 in share, they, are, they are the mining entity. There are 51 percent shareholder in Noranda Jamaica Bauxite, bauxite Partners, Partners 2, which has been the company issued the license by the Mines and Geology Division to dig out over this cockpit country. Our, our face off. Mm -hmm. is with the government of Jamaica. Our the issue is with the 51% man and after the 49. 49. Hmm? Who is the 51%? The government of, of Jamaica. Who the people and what we elect. Put we'll your finger in the ink and say, God, go protect me. But let's, go, let's, let's take it from the parochial cockpit country to Jamaica. That same dilemma has affected the people of St. Catherine, historically. St. Anne. St. Anne, Manchester, Manchester Saint and St. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. And... It has affected them because the bauxite out the done. Oh, when it is done, and we must move the discussion away from people think the envir environment, uh, uh, environmentalists are straight, just tree huggers. No, nobody dig it out because mm. we love it and it's pretty. Them plant here, you must make them grow and pretty. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment below. Remember to like and share the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. Follow me on social media and check out the suggested videos on screen. This is Teach saying, until next time, walk good, my friends.